What's going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we have kind of a fun one for you getting started with graphical user interfaces or GUIs in Python using the uh, tkinter or kinter um, import uh, module that, that can build graphical user interfaces. It comes standard with Python in installs and we're going to do kind of a fun GUI by building out a playable tic-tac-toe game as our first um, as our first app. So it's kind of a fun way to get introduced to uh, graphical user interfaces before I get into it if you do find this or anything else on the channel helpful I really appreciate a like on this video a subscribe to the channel helps me out a ton as I'm getting started here um, and if you'd like to see anything in particular on this channel or have any questions feel free to let me know about in the comments below and without any further ado let's get right into it so the first thing you're going to do anytime you're uh, using Kinter as your um, graphical user interface uh, module is you're going to import it and so I like to just do from uh, Kinter import uh, all which is the star um, and then the second thing I always do when you build a new app is just root equals um, TK open parentheses you're just defining uh, what the root is so that you can draw all of your widgets onto the root of the screen so um, that's just the, the first thing, the first two things you have to do. We haven't created anything that's going to get drawn onto the screen yet. Um, and those are called widgets. So things like labels, buttons, text inputs, sliders, progress bars, anything like that. They're all called widgets. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and define one just to get something drawing on the screen. So let's go ahead and just call it main label. And uh, the way you do it, you you pick a variable name for your label, something that's easy to remember, and uh, just set it equal to, and then capital L for label, uh, say where you're drawing it. So we're drawing it onto the root, which is the purpose of defining it before. And then say what we want the text to be equal to. And so since we want to build a tic-tac-toe game, we'll say welcome to tic-tac-toe. Okay. And uh, so there's two things you have to do with every widget. You have to define it, but then you also have to draw onto screen. And there are two ways to do this. I'll go ahead and show them both here. Um, the first would be what's called pack, which is it just picks the next location that Kinter calculates is the logical location for it to go. And it's not very graceful. You're probably not going to use this a whole lot. Um, but I'll just do this to um, show how to get something on the screen as soon as possible. And then to actually get your app to run, you always have to do root dot main loop um, and just like that. And you've created a, a game loop of, of not a game loop, an app loop of the thing actually running and drawing on screen. So that should be all we need to do to get. Yeah, so we get this little obviously it doesn't look like much. Um, we get this little app. And you may notice because we didn't define location or anything, it, it resizes and slides around, um, which you might like, you might not. But uh, what we'll do next is we'll actually show how to improve the location of your widget. But you can see right there, we made a label and got it onto a usable app um, in you know three minutes. Uh, so that's pretty cool. That's a cool start to the um, building of an app. But let's go ahead and make a second label, and we'll call this um, player select label. Uh, I, I, I use kind of long variable names, but it's partly so that it's clear when looking at the code what each thing does. And so on this one, we'll uh, tell the player select a, select a character to play as. Okay, and what I'm going to do for this one instead of pack is I'm going to do player select label and I am going to use the other way of drawing things on the somewhat more precise way of drawing it which is dot grid and you actually define a row and a column location for your grid elements when you do this. So uh, let's go ahead and just do um, row one. So it should be down one level and then column zero. And let's go ahead and run this, take a look at what we get. It already has, right. Uh, you can't use pack and grid. Um, so as soon as you use grid, you, um, you're you saying, okay, we're gonna use a grid system, whereas pack is saying you're gonna let us define it. So we also need to have our label, um, which is why I put this in row one, so that our main label could be in row zero. So now when we run it, we should have our welcome to tic-tac-toe, yep, above select a character to play as. 
But now you'll see when I resize it, they don't move because we've built out a grid system um, and these are going to be in the top left and then, you know, second row still all the way to the left because we built a grid. And if you think about it, the grid is stationary, even if you change the size of the screen. So that's pretty cool. But now you're saying, well, we told them to select a character to play as and we haven't actually done anything to um, to, to handle character selection yet. So let's get on to the next type of widget I want to cover, which is buttons. And we're going to have two, right? In tic-tac-toe, you can be X's or O's. So we're going to have um, what I'll call X button. And the format is just like with labels, a capital B to say it's going to be a Kinter button. And then we put it on the root and we'll just make the text X, right? Because you're this is going to be showing up below the select a character to play as and all it has to do is display an X and then our O button same deal button with capital B draw it onto the root and then um, this actually it needs to be text equals I just left it as uh, an X but okay so then down here text is gonna be O and so those are our two buttons and then we're gonna go ahead and draw them on to the screen so we'll do X X button dot grid and let's go ahead I think I copied too much there and we want this to be in row 2 column 0 and then let's put the O button uh, let's put that in row 2 column 1 so this is the first thing we're seeing where we go into a second column right um, but now let's go ahead and run it and check it out here uh, so yeah, you can see it's trying to um, it's trying to put the button at the first available space after this first column. Um, we'll take a look in future videos about actually resizing it to make it pretty. But you can see we have two buttons here. Um, we have an X and an O, and nothing happens yet because we haven't built out what actually happens when you push the buttons. But let's take a look at a couple things you can do with buttons since we're talking about them right now. Um, you can change the state to disabled when you want someone to not be able to click on it. So let's say the game has already started and you don't want them to be able to change their character mid-game. That would be a time to either remove the button from the screen or just disable it. So um, like if you're building one screen out and they're going to stay on that screen the whole time they play the game, you might need to disable and then enable um, button states on a screen. So you can do state uh, disabled. And then the next thing we're going to cover is the next thing we actually want to do um, with the app, which is um, what actually happens when you click the button, right? So that's called command. And um, command is you define the function that runs when you click the button. So we're going to come up here and we're actually going to write a couple functions. And I'll call this um, x, x select. And then we'll do another function that I'll call O select. Okay. And so when the X button is clicked, you say command equals and then X select. Okay. And then for O, we're going to say command equals O select. And that is all we have to do to get them to run these functions. Now we haven't. Uh, told the functions to do anything yet. So let's go ahead and say what we actually want to have happen. Um, I will go ahead and make a um, variable called player character. And when the game starts, we just want it to be empty. And then I'm going to call that inside of these functions. So I'm going to call global player character for both of these. Um, and then what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to say player character equals and inside of x select right it's going to be x and then inside of o select it's going to be an o um, and i am assuming you know a little bit of fundamental python and how just functions and object oriented programming work there is a tutorial series on this youtube uh, channel plus lots of other content out there if you're a little bit confused about just how the code works and not the kinter specific things uh, you might want to check that series out first but okay so we've said that the character is going to be X if they select this and O if they select this. And let's go ahead and actually draw another label on the screen that's going to tell them um, what they've selected, who they're playing as. So uh, we'll say player label equals a new label. Um, we'll draw it on the root. And we are going to say that the text is equal to 
you have selected and then we will add the player character okay um, and one thing I haven't talked about because we've been doing the defining of the widget and then the drawing of it is separately so far you can actually come to the very end of your widget definition where you do the label and tack the grid right onto the end of it I don't usually like doing it this way because um, especially as you get more complex widgets they can start to like run over to um, oh, we want that to be row 3 column 0 uh, they can they can start to run over into a second line and it's just a little cleaner to separate them out but I did want to show that this works so I'm gonna leave that one there for that and then so this is handling defining it and drawing it onto the screen in the same row which is pretty nice um, and let's go ahead and just copy this exact same thing and let's that should work it should uh, place it in the same spot regardless of what button you press um, so let me go ahead and run it and let's see okay welcome to tic-tac-toe select a character to play as let's play as X you have selected X let's select O you have selected O okay pretty cool so let's do one last thing in this video um, and then I will save the like operational playable game for a future video um, when X or O is selected let's also draw a start button onto the screen okay because now that they've selected a character we want them to be able to play the game so let's go ahead and say start button that's gonna be a button it's still gonna be on the root and the text is going to say start oh we'll just say start um, and let's put that just below the label so that's gonna be now we're into row four and column zero okay and let's put that in both of them because regardless of which one they do um, we want them to be able to start afterwards and you may have noticed I didn't so let's go X okay there it is oh there it is um, you may have noticed I didn't do anything yet uh, for what that start button is gonna do because once you hit the start button it's gonna be time to play the game uh, we need to disable these buttons we need to go into a state where the grid shows up and you actually can click on um, you actually can click on any of the buttons and uh, play the game and then um, that's that's gonna require a new function which we'll call the actual like game mode function um, so this is an intro to building a GUI with um, with Kinter and Python it's uh, step one be sure uh, for a lookout um, for follow-up videos to this one where we really flesh out the app more and if I see comments or questions I'll make sure to cover those in the follow-up uh, videos in this series but for now I hope you found this useful if you did again I really appreciate a like and a subscribe to the channel it helps me out a ton as I'm getting going here um, and as always good luck with your code and thanks for watching thanks bye